Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm trying out the Sigma 150 to 600 on the Canon R7. This was by far the most overwhelming request that I've had since I've had the R7. How does it work on the Sigma 150? Well, I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna let you know how it goes. But very first, I need to put in a disclaimer that Sigma have come out and said that this lens is not compatible with this camera in regards to the AI servo eye tracking. So you need to be aware of that before you purchase this lens, it's not compatible with this camera. What I wanna try and find out is what sort of shots can we get even though it might have some autofocus issues. I'm gonna go out into the field and I'm gonna put it through its paces and I'm gonna bring it on my property here and try out the autofocus, record it and show you what this pulsing is, how it impacts your photos. Okay, so part one, let's go out into the field and see what sort of shots we can get. Enjoy. Well, good morning and welcome to the channel. I've come to the Winton Wetlands to photograph some birds, but I've got here and the sun is just coming up and there's the most amazing scene I've ever seen. I can't believe how beautiful this is. I'm not a landscape photographer, I'm a wildlife photographer, but I have to photograph this. So we've got, we've got some fog and we've got some trees and the color in the sky uh, is just something else. I'm gonna try and use the R7 to take a landscape photo. I've actually got the 24 to 105 f4 on here um, i'm not quite sure what settings to use to be honest because i don't take these sorts of shots so we'll go for a slow shutter speed to get that iso down I'll try and be a landscape photographer and see if i can get this so i'm at iso 100 <laughs> i'm at 1 1 13th of a second at f4 trying to get a bit of that reflection It's very cold, it's about two degrees. Uh, my hands are cold, I should have some gloves on. So that was pretty exciting, I must admit, just to make the most of that little bit of color that we had. The color's fading now, but um, well, I'm glad I got here extra early and managed to start the session off with that. I'm actually here with my mate, Brian, who's actually gonna lend me his 150 to 600. I've got it on the R7. Oh, there are some cockatoos, but we've lost the color, unfortunately, which is a bit of a bummer just got these birds and these dead trees and uh, it's pretty stunning I must admit. Oh, that's kind of crazy. The sun's coming up, we've got the fog and we've got all these dead trees and it's creating some most amazing photos. It's just incredible. The sun's almost too bright. This is crazy. Alright, so um, you've obviously seen in most of my videos, I use this ground pod and there will be a link in the description of where I got this from, but it's quite expensive. I think it's a hundred bucks or something like that uh, for a bit of plastic. And I always talk about you can make your own. Well, my mate Brian's made his own. He's got himself an aluminium frying pan and he has put a, bit, a few blocks of wood on here. Uh, he's put a 3-8 bolt in the bit of wood and then obviously puts your gimbal on top of that. And then he's just glued the bottom, the bolt coming through the bottom. So, um, you know, I don't know, what, what did this cost, Brian? Pretty much cost him nothing. He got the uh, frying pan from the Salvation Army, bit of wood, bit of a bolt, and away you go. So if you're handy, you don't have to spend the money, you can make one like this. So, uh, good on you, Brian. <laughs> Thanks for that. Can of, spray. <laughs> can, of, can of spray to paint it. Yeah, that's the... Yeah, oh, that's, that's good.
So in terms of effective focal length, we've got a 600 millimeter lens times 1.6 gives us 960 effective focal length, which is quite a lot, which is good. And we've got a couple of cockatoos on some branches. Did I mention it's cold? <laughs> oh, my fingers just don't want to work. So we didn't have much luck with the water birds, there just weren't any ducks, so we've come for a drive. But the fog's still very thick, but uh, I've spotted some goldfinches in a tree over here, which is a, a feral bird in Australia, but they're quite pretty, so we'll go and photograph them and see how we get on. Oh. That's nice. Did you get some of those? <laughs> that was unreal. <laughs> so I whacked up this dead branch here on this log because I was hoping to get some sort of robin or something to land on here. And for some weird reason, a yellow rump thornbill, birds just landed on this and we've managed to get some shots. So it goes to show sometimes you just get lucky. Sometimes you can just put up a perch like this and a bird lands on it. I'm on my property, I'm gonna test the autofocus of the Sigma 150-600 on the R7. Now these are probably the best autofocus conditions you're gonna get. We've got nice light, we've got an isolated bird, the autofocus is gonna be able to pick up the bird. What we're interested in seeing is whether this lens pulses like it does on the R5 and the R6. And when I say pulsing, what I mean is that it locks onto the head of the bird and then it comes in and out of focus. That's what I mean by pulsing. And we saw that on the R5 and the R6, and Sigma have come out and said that this lens does not support the AI servo or eye tracking of this mirrorless body. So it's not compatible, so we shouldn't expect it to. However, many of you have still asked me to test this lens on this camera, so I am. And I will take some shots of some Jackie Winters and we will see how well it does. I'll record it on the viewfinder that I've got here so you can see it and let's get shooting and get these birds so let's go so in regards to my autofocus settings I have got eye tracking on AF on and I've got traditional on the star so when I hold down AF on the eye tracking is engaged and it will find the bird's eye and track it so in the menu I am going to try uh, a couple of cases I'll try all of them I'll try auto and I'll try a few different things to see if those have any influence over the performance of the autofocus so you can see the Jackie Winter has landed on our perch. I engage the AF on button, and as you can see, the eye tracking works extremely well. It finds the eye of the bird, it's staying on the eye of the bird, and then if I hold down the shutter button, we can see that it just starts taking photos. And when we're sort of from a further distance like we are now, it's kind of hard to see whether that pulsing is going on. So what I need to do is get quite a lot closer and almost minimum focus distance so the bird's nice and big and we can see how that pulsing goes. So we'll just move forward. I've got quite a bit closer. I'm at about five meters away now. So very, very close. These birds are quite tame and they will allow me, but this should give us a headshot because I'm shooting at 600 millimeters. So 960 equivalent focal length. And we'll see how bad that pulsing is with the bird when it arrives. Okay, so the Jackie Winter will come down and land on one of these wooden perches here and we'll engage the auto IF. There it is, and there it is. So let's engage and see what's happening. Oh, it's pulsing already, you can see it. You can see how it's just pulsing. The eye tracking goes to the eye, but it's just pulsing like crazy. So if we do take a burst of shots,
we're going to get sharp shots and soft ones at the same time. Okay, so unfortunately, as we saw there, the pulsing is still happening on this lens. If you hold down that AF on button, it's, it does work and then it comes off and goes on and comes off and goes off and you know, it's just a bummer. So you will get lots of sharp shots, but you're just gonna get soft ones. And as I mentioned, it gets worse the closer you get. Now I have tried all the different AF cases and none of them change. It's, it's, nothing's gonna improve this. It's clearly a compatibility issue between the AI tracking and the lens, as Sigma have said. So be prepared if you do get this lens and try and use it on an R7, you will encounter some AF issues and that's a real shame. Just to recap, we had that amazing session at the wetlands where I got some really good shots with the lens. I was very, very happy with those first shots with the amazing color that we had with that sunrise. And we also tested the lens on the property here and we saw how the autofocus does pulse at times. I also went out twice more with this lens just to keep testing it. Uh, the first time was after work, I had a very short amount of time and I actually tested the low light capability and I must admit I really struggled. I really didn't get many sharp shots at all. I did get a few, I had to use very slow shutter speed. So I think I was at ISO 6400, one two hundredth of a second shutter speed, which is just really hard. And the R7 does appear to struggle a little bit in low light, a lot more than say the R5 or the R6, which is to be expected for its price point. Um, I did manage to get one shot. This is not a good shot by any means, but I just wanted to show you how I'm dealing with the noise of the R7 in low light. So we've got this shot of a gray strike thrush. It was on the ground, it's a bit messy, but it is sharp, which is good. <laughs> but it was at ISO 6400, and you can see this uh, processed image. It doesn't look too bad. You, there's not a lot of noise, and it cleans up pretty well. How I'm doing that is I'm actually processing the raw file in Lightroom, did a whole video on my Lightroom process, uh, you can free to watch. Okay, so the software that I use at the moment is Topaz Denoise, because DxO Pure Raw still isn't working on the R7 files. And I simply just open up Denoise within Lightroom itself, and you can see in action here, once the noise reduction's been applied, I can just drag that slider and it magically removes the noise. You do lose a little bit of detail, but it cleans it up extremely well, and you have to have a play around with the settings. It doesn't work perfectly every time. The reason I mention this is I have been offering a 15% off discount code in the description to the software. So at the end of July 2022, I believe they're going to remove all discount codes. So if you've been on the fence and you're considering purchasing it, make sure to use that link in the description and that discount code. So the other session I had with this kit was something completely different outside my warehouse. I'm actually part of a road safety group and as part of that group we run motorcycle safety days to help people learn how to ride their motorbike safely and I just volunteered. I said oh look I'll come along and take some photos of the participants and it'll be a good way for me to test the autofocus of the R7 and the Sigma. So I went along and I've actually got myself in position and I've, and I've actually recorded the autofocus just to see how well it would perform. And to my surprise, it performed exceptionally well. Now I was in vehicles for tracking, I'd gone off birds onto vehicles, and as the motorbikes were coming around the track, I've obviously just pointed the camera, initiated the tracking, and we can see the blue box has just grabbed hold of that motorbike, and it's tracked it all the way around, and took lots and lots of shots. And in thinking about why the autofocus is working better, it could be a couple of reasons. I think the light, I had a lot of light, so the more light you have, the better the autofocus will work. And the second thing is those motorbikes are quite isolated, they're quite big, so maybe it's just easier for the system to track those things than a little bird's eye. And when I reviewed the shots, only a few of them had suffered from that pulsing where one's sharp, one soft. Majority of them were sharp and I was actually very happy with how those shots turned out. I've shared some of those shots with the participants and they were extremely grateful and happy with how it came out. And I guess I just had a lot of fun trying something different. You know, I think I get so focused on birds, I forget there are other things you can photograph. So I was pretty happy with this video that I did a little bit of landscape. I've got, got the opportunity to photograph some motorbikes. So, you know, that was a really good test and it performed extremely well in that regard. So let's just recap the things I found with the Sigma and the R7. First thing I want to talk about very quickly is the image quality. Now, as you saw from the images in this video, the image quality is really good, and this lens performs extremely well for its price. When it locks on and it's in focus, it looks excellent, and I'm very confident anyone that uses this kit will get nice shots. So obviously the biggest thing that we need to talk about is the autofocus of this lens on this camera, and it just breaks my heart that we have these pulsing issues, because this combo would be so good, and I would recommend it in a heartbeat, but it's hard for me to recommend due to these autofocus issues that you're gonna encounter. And I just wanna stress in regards to the autofocus, 
I did take a lot of soft shots. Now I've shown pretty much most of the sharp shots. I just want to show you a, a quick series of shots that I had with an Eastern spine bill. I was hand holding it. It's landed on a branch in front of me. I put the camera up to my eye. I put eye tracking on and it's just struggled to get the bird in focus. It's got it in focus. I've taken some shots and you can see that it quickly goes out of focus again. And then we get a couple in focus. And in just that burst of shots, that was my overall experience. You would get nice sharp shots, but then you'd get frustratingly soft shots as well. So I don't want you to think that I've just taken lots of nice shots. I did take lots of poor ones and lots of soft ones. Just be aware that I am getting soft shots with this lens and that is to be expected. And look, you could turn off the AI tracking and just go into uh, a traditional one-shot autofocus. And I did do that with those Jackie Winters. And you can see that it's locked onto the subject. I've taken the shots and they were sharp. And I've even merged these two photos together to create this quite interesting image. And that was just using one shot. But if you just go to one shot, you're kind of losing the purpose of these mirrorless bodies and that amazing tracking. So you do have that option, but I do question why you would go into that mode all the time uh, when you have tracking available. So overall, um, it works, it doesn't work. It's a bit of a bummer, and just something you need to be aware of. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is the buffer that people keep going on about. So I'm now shooting in 15 frames per second mechanical a lot of the time and I'm in C-RAW which gives me over 100 shots to the buffer over 7 seconds and all through testing this uh, lens I didn't really hit the buffer that often so I highly encourage you to check which SD card you're using and if you can afford it consider getting the faster one. Prograde have offered a 15% discount to all of my subscribers or viewers. You In the description, you have to go to their website, um, not on Amazon, so it's on Prograde's own website. Follow the link in the description. There's a code there next to it. Put that code in at checkout, you'll get the 15% off and you'll be able to use these professional cards. Okay, so in conclusion, the lens performed exactly as I thought it would. It's nice and sharp when it locks on, but has those autofocus issues. I know many of you wanna know what lens should you buy for the R7, and I do plan on doing quite an extensive uh, look at all the different lenses that are available for this camera. You know, the RF 800 F11, the 100 to 400, 405.6, the old 100 400. There's lots of lenses, so I will go into those and try and recommend which one I think will work best with this camera, so that'll be coming in the future. I just want to thank all the new members that have joined the channel. If you're not aware, you can become a member. So you can join for less than the price of a cup of coffee per month, and that directly supports me and helps me to buy lenses, review gear, and do all that sort of thing. Thanks to all the new subscribers. The channel's doing very well. I'm very appreciative of that. Thanks for liking these videos. That lets YouTube know it's worth watching, and Till the next one, just happy birding, have fun, take care, and see you later. For less than the cup of a price of for less than the cup of, I can't even say this. So less so you can join for less than the price of a cup of coffee per month. And